Hi once again and welcome to our blog. I am Jim Cuervo, your senior instructor here at Digital Drafting Systems. Today's blog topic is Revit to 3D Studio Max on Arnold, Arnold Workflow Part 4 Rendering Settings. We have already seen in previous blogs some ways to export from Revit, import and organization in 3D Max of our Revit model, lighting essentials and materials, here we will discuss the fundamental settings for a quick render out of, out of our scene. I have taken the liberty of swapping the Revit furniture with better 3D Max furniture with Arnold materials on them already. So we can briefly discuss some of the Arnold render engine settings in order to get a fast render at high resolution of our model. Let's get started. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, tell you of the things that I've done. First, one of the things that I've done for this particular model ha is to include an HDRI for our general lighting, uh, not only for the general lighting, but to also add a background scene. And that was done by opening up my Explorer, grabbing the HDRI, left button, mouse click, and then release inside the scene. I'm not going to do that because it's already been done, but I will show you what it results in. Let's go ahead and close this and bring in the material editor. And I went ahead from the render environments, I copied this over to here as an instance. Once I there, I noticed that automatically it turns it into an environmental background, spherical environment, this particular HDRI is in fact a spherical HDRI. <clears throat> I also came over here to the output settings and I increased the output so I can get a little bit of more a little bit more brightness. Otherwise this might look a little bit on the dark side. So by generating a bigger output, I can then lighten up my background. Very well. Further, I went ahead and my Crescent F3 here. I added some foliage, bougainvillea here on the uh, trellis, no, not trellis, uh, yes, the trellis up here, and I added a tree outside and a couple of bushes in the um, little terrace out here. I also exchanged the uh, bed for a better, more, a better material, better looking bed. I changed my uh, um, items here, which are the, um, well, actually this one needs to go. Okay, we'll go ahead and delete that. Well, we'll leave it there for now. Okay, I went ahead and added uh, better lighting, better uh, better um, lamps here. I went ahead and added some artwork on the walls and art light, uh, artwork on this wall, and added some curtains. Now, let's take a look at the render settings. Now, I'm not going to go render back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It gets a little monotonous and it also is just too long. Rather than do that, let's go ahead and explain some of the settings that I've done here. I went ahead in the camera AA, I left it alone. I could have raised it, but it would have increased my numbers in here. Watch what happens. And it's important to keep these numbers here on the low side. You do really don't want to be uh, too high on these numbers because it will take much longer to render. I could have raised it here to maybe four. You'll notice the numbers change. And eventually, all of these numbers are changed in a, in a very uh, exponential way. If I change the diffuse here, this diffuse, what it's doing in diffuse uh, samples, it is adding or di diminishing the amount of noise in the fuse. The same thing with the speculars. Okay, the amount of ray depth is the amount of rays coming out of each one of these. So it's every six, every every one I have two, this is actually 12, and then multiplying it exponentially, you get these numbers. See, I believe that you multiply this times this times this, you get that. I'm not sure, I have to kind of refresh my mind on that, but it's something along those lines. Okay, the Transmission, I left it at 2 and 8 and the rate depth, so I get every one of these gives me 8. As far as the uh, um, 
subobject level or, or sub sub uh, the translucency of some of the light coming through in solid objects like marble and things like that, which is the SSS. I don't have any SSS materials in here, so I don't need to have any kind of uh, value there. The same thing for volume indirect. I don't have any volume in it. In reality, to get a quick and easy render, these are the settings you need to work with. Another set of settings that you also need to work with are the ones that are going to increase your level of, of, uh, of finesse in the lighting. And that is also in the light. Let me just go ahead and select by name here. Let's go ahead and select this one right here and say OK. And the place to actually increase your resolution of the light really comes here in rendering samples. The samples are set to 8. I could have pushed them up higher, and that eventually will actually increase render time, but it will also incre increase or, or polish up the quality of the render. Now let's take a look at something else here, which is our frame uh, RAM, uh, RAM display of the renders. This is the render from the last one, just as it was at 1024 638 or 683, something like 1024 683. So what is the, it's right there, 1024 683. This is without any changes to the render engine. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and, 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 and open it up here so we can see them both side by side here. Okay, and then now that I'm going to show you the look with just these settings, render time an hour and a half for a 1024 683. Okay, all of this was done on the basis of being able to change, the change some of the geometry improve the materials in some cases, adding more uh, geometry to the outside just to embellish it a little bit, and this is the result. As you can tell, straight out of the, sh the, the item, I have not done anything else other than just render it out. I didn't even take it to Photoshop. This is exactly how it comes out of the software with these basic settings. Is there a little bit of noise? Yes, there's more noise happening in here. Okay, this noise in here is actually coming from the material itself. Okay, and if we look at the material for that, the sampling for this is actually going to come from here. Let me go ahead and just grab it, move this down and grab that from there. Okay, that's the material. And that noise level is actually coming from the roughness right here. That's where it's coming from. Is there a way for us to go ahead and actually do a little more diagnostics on it? Yes, there is, we, which is by with the use of OAVs, or arbitrary output variables, which are basically render passes. But you can also use them to troubleshooting for troubleshooting, rather, the render noise source and identifying how to actually diminish it or what you, numbers you need to change. Okay, but for AOVs, we will have yet another um, session of the AO AOVs explaining specifically how they work and how they will help you to identify your trouble spots. Once again, I am Jim Cuervo for Digital Drafting Systems thanking you for watching this sequence of videos on Revit to 3D Studio Max and Arnold Workflow Rendering Settings Part 4. Looking forward to seeing you on the next one, 3D Studio Max and Arnold AOVs, how to use them. I hope you have a great day. See you in the next one. Thank you for watching.